going to make a video on how to check the wide travel on the 3D Pro Extreme S. First thing we want to do is take the bottom panel off the machine. We're using a 3/32 Allen wrench for these two screws right here on the bottom. Next, we're going to remove the feet. And once you remove the feet, the, pan the bottom panel of the machine should come off pretty easily. But don't put off too fast because I'm going to pick underneath this here. It'll help you get it out of there if it fits a little tight. Now you're going to see two wires attached to this. It might be a good idea to take a picture of this before you unhook it so you remember where the uh, wires go. But there are only two places where it can possibly go and they both only fit each one way. So you pull this first one off, pull this clip, then pull straight back. Same on the other side. It's the black and red wire. Pinch the clip, pull straight back. And you just want to make sure when we get back together that these go back in the same exact place. And now this comes off, set it to the side. Now it's a good idea to put your feet back on. You just put them in there real quick so whenever we get the machine uh, set back up that it's not directly on the floor. The next thing I'm going to do, and obviously you'll have a back panel on your machine so you won't have these wires to worry about. But we're going to set this machine on its back. Like so. Then we're going to use a 964 Allen wrench to remove these two screws. So when we remove these two screws, the ball screw here will no longer be attached and it will allow for free travel. So we take our 964 Allen wrench, loosen these up. Once you get it loose, you can use your fingers. And then on this right side, make sure if there's a slight bend in either direction of this little needle here, get it straight from the front. Yeah, there you go. So if there's a bend up or down, make sure that goes back in the same direction. Once again, you might want to take a picture here so you remember which way it goes in. Because this guy goes up into here and that's what tells your machine that it's in the home position. So now we're going to loosen that one up. And also when you're putting it back on, make sure that that needle goes right in between those two plastic parts up here. And we'll go over that whenever we get this back together. Okay, so now at this point, and it also might help if we start with it in the down, in the furthest away from home position that you can. So, and if your machine is not there, we'll go ahead and do that by lightly and very slowly pressing on the top of the table and moving this all the way down. So, and our goal here is to have this post touching the back of the cast here. As you can see, there is no gap between those two points, or a very small gap if there is one. They should pretty much be touching though in the, in the very back. So what we want to do here because uh, the issue that you're probably having is that your cutter wheel is not reaching the jaw box. We're going to come up front. I'm going to, and now you'll see here free motion and it should be this easy. It should be quite simple and quite free moving back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and put a jaw on here with the A side facing me. Tighten it down. I'm going to have my cutter wheel here. So the issue that you were probably having is that your cutter wheel, while trying to calibrate, was not reaching the box. And as you see here, my cutter wheel 
reaches the box. When I push it all the way back, I can no longer spin it because they're hitting each other. This is where we need to be. If, if this is not happening, what we want to do is pull our jaw off and we want to go ahead and apply some pressure to the back. We want to help those bearings underneath the tables group together. So apply some pressure. Don't be scared to go ahead and push on it a little bit and hopefully you'll feel those bearings slide a little bit underneath. And that should give us the travel we need for your box to reach the cutter wheel. You can go ahead and stop it. And um, Okay, so now, now that we hopefully have full travel in the Y table, we're going to go ahead and get this back together. So we'll get the machine back on its back. Like I said, you'll have a back panel on, you won't have to worry about these wires. Go ahead and do that. Oops, shouldn't have done that. Okay. So now we're going to start with the one on the left side. We're just going to place it in there, place the screw in there. Make sure this is sitting nice and flat in the front, and that will align the screw holes. We'll tighten this down by hand. Not too tight, just get it in there. Now I'm going to take the other one. And remember, I paid attention to the direction that this was bent when I took it out, so I'm going to put it back in the same exact way. So here's the critical part. Whenever we pull this up slowly, and actually what we're going to do is go ahead and remove this coupling right here. And that will remove uh, the power from the control board. So I'm going to loosen this up with my 330 seconds Allen wrench. The bottom one, not the top one. The bottom one here, not this one. So we loosen that up, the one that's attached to the shaft of the motor. Pull that straight down. And now you'll have much freer motion. Okay? Because what we want to do is make sure that the needle here is directly in the middle of those two plastic parts. There should be a gap on the back side and front side. It's kind of hard to see at the angle we're at, but you want that needle right in the middle of those two parts. It can't be rubbing the plastic. So once you have it where you want it, we're going to go ahead and tighten down this side. Now I'm going to tighten down my other side. So I'm going to go up here. It's right in the middle, right where I want it. Come down to where I can get it. I'm going to hold it in place where it was and tighten down. And if it moves on you when you're tightening, then you want to get it pretty much as tight as you can, but still have a little bit of free motion like I just did there. See how when I tightened it, it moved. So I'm going to go ahead and get it almost all the way down. finger here. So right now it's almost all the way tight. As you can see it just has a little bit of movement. So now I'm going to go up, get it in the middle where I want it, and tighten it down. And be real careful of it spinning on you. So now I have it pretty much where I want it. And see it turned on me again. So it can be a little bit tricky. And we call that the Y limit actuator. But I got it right back where I needed it. And it goes all the way up. Hold it in place as I tighten it down. And now it goes all the way up and comes back, hopefully, all the way down to where this post here is pretty much touching the cast, like we talked about earlier. So now, once we have those two screws tightened down, we're ready to reattach our coupler. If your little black piece here fell off, it goes right back on and fits tightly on the ears of your coupling. And then you press it straight up. I'm using my bigger Allen wrench here to help me push this up. And then I'll grab my 330 seconds, get it into a position where I can 
Hold this up with my thumb and tighten this down at the same time. Good and tight. Now everything is attached. At this point, you no longer want to move the ball screw up and down. So now we're ready to put our bottom panel back on. So I'm going to take the machine, set it back on its nose. I'm going to take my panel. I have my two wires that were in here. Remember, one's the red and black, and one's the blue and brown. The red and the black one goes here on the left side with the clip on the outside, and those pins go directly into our holes here. And you'll, you'll hear it lightly snap into place with that clip. Now we come to the other side. Same thing here. The two pins, there's no pin in the middle, so you have one on each on the outsides. Like so. You get them in the holes, the pins in the holes. Once you have them, you press straight down and it'll snap into place. And I messed up here. We want to take our feet off before we do that. Get your feet out of the way. But if you don't, it's not a big deal. We just take them off like I'm doing here. Now, put it into place. Put your feet on. All four of them. I'm just going to do two. Put all four of them on there. Now we have our screws from earlier with our 332 Allen wrench. And hopefully you'll be good to go. All right. Thank you, Philip. Thank you.